Hello, friends. Welcome to the MMOA podcast brought to you by the Institute of Clinical Excellence. My name is Dr. Samantha Chamberlain, and I get to be your host today. We are busy with courses all year, so MMOA Essential Foundations starts March 1st. So the next cohort of our um, online Essential Foundations course starts March 1st, which is sneaking up on us rapidly. Um, February 18th, we're at Advanced Rehab and Sports Medicine in Illinois. Um, and on March 4th, we're at Milwaukee at Onward. And then we have another double header on March 11th with courses going on at um, in Lake Elmo, Minnesota, as well as at Force PT in Adventura, Florida. Hopefully I didn't completely say that wrong. So today I'd really like to take the opportunity to have this uh, mic and highlight some information in an article that part of the modern management of the older adult team collaborated on at the end of last year. It was Dr. Alex Germano, Dr. Julie Brower, Dr. Jeff Musgrave, and myself um, wrote an article from Sickness to Fitness, a Rehab Continuum. This article appeared in the November 2022 uh, Jerry Notes. And it was the special continuing education module, module issue, Changing Attitudes, Enhancing Engagement in Aging. So it fit right in with our messaging. And so we got to have that opportunity to write that article. So we completed this article with a specific patient situation in mind and led the reader through the patient's journey from the acute care setting all the way up to community fitness. And I, of course, am not going to sit here and read this article to you. You can um, find that. But I would like to highlight two points. The first is an example of the highlighter method. Each phase of rehab is building on the previous um, setting that, that they were in. The second is the handoff sheet to make that previous point achievable and to be able to kick off right where they left off instead of having this regression. So let's look at the programming example that we provided. Julie kicked us off with the patient in acute care. She had programmed six minutes of effort cycling through three sit to stands and 10 TheraBand step downs at an RPE of seven out of 10. This sounds simple and that's exactly the point that I want to make. She had three sit to stands, 10 TheraBand step downs at an RP of seven. It was specific and it was dosed to what the patient needed to be able to do to go back home instead of to a skilled nursing facility or be institutionalized elsewhere out of the acute setting. So he needed to be able to do transfers and he needed to be able to walk long enough distances to get from kitchen to bathroom to bedroom to living room type situation. So I have no doubt that to get buy-in with this patient, she said, to get you to be able to return home, we need to be able to do some continuous work and we need to show that you can do it safely and that you can safely transfer. While we're here, we might as well track the effort required to do this. So think of zero out of 10 as no effort and 10 out of 10 as the most effort you can possibly give. I want you to perform at a pace that keeps you at a seven out of 10. So she's introduced, it, introduced a rate of perceived exertion to this patient. I know this because it's in the handoff sheet that we're gonna talk about later. Patient crushes it. It's not easy, but he crushes it and he gets discharged to home with PT set up in the home, whether that's home health or maybe even an outpatient mobile clinician. In our case, this is going to be Alex. So Alex communicates with Julie and knows where the patient left off with her. Alex is able to perform the appropriate outcome measures based on the information that Julie gave her and how the patient left the discharge information that was left with the patient. So then at her eval, she's able to dive into similar interventions that the patient is now familiar with or continue the dosage that Julie gave as home exercise. This cohesive transition allows the patient to feel the continuity of care that we all hope to have within the medical system, but rarely ever do. So the patient's not there trying to advocate for themselves over and over again. They are already feeling like, oh, this person knows what I just went through and knows where I'm at and is starting at. Yes, we still need to gather that subjective information, but if you're speaking the same language, it's gonna go so far for this patient. The patient is progressing well and is appropriate for outpatient at this point and would like to transition out of his home. Alex had the patient performing 10 minutes, so we went from six minutes to 10 minutes of continuous effort at an RPE of six to seven out of 10. She, of course, reviewed what RPE was, but he already was familiar with this rating scale. And she had him doing 10 steps up on a staircase with bilateral upper extremity support, walking around the house, five sit to stands from a low couch. So for 10 minutes, he was cycling through 10 step ups on a staircase, walk through the house, and then five sit to stands from a low couch. Ideally on a warm day, he's actually watch, walking outside the perimeter of his home. 
again, there's communication between Alex and in the scenario myself as the patient transitions to my care from the home. I was able to transition him from the SPPB outcome measure to the mini best and kick off interventions right where the patient left off with Alex. There was no regression. There was no ramp up period. There was no, how is he going to handle this? To some degree, we still want to know, of course, because now he's having to get out of his community. Like, is it too much? So we maybe start a little bit below where Alex handed off, but it's the same type of work, same type of interventions that he's familiar with. And he's not being overwhelmed by also having to get out of his home and try to do these new things. So I'm going to have him doing step ups instead of bilateral upper extremity support. It becomes unilateral upper extremity, upper extremity support. Walking becomes on uneven surfaces or a multi-directional. Sit to stands become lower, lower surface as well as increased load, you know, as tolerated and, you know, various visits, not all at once. And then we want to leave gas in the tank. So we also program a minute of active rest. This can be as simple as deep breathing with coordinated upper extremity movement. So we're trying to get that upper extremity involved as well, even though we're trying to strengthen the lower extremity. Upper extremity still matters, especially if we're talking about floor transfers or an individual that has to use their arms to push up from their chair. This is programmed as an EMOM, so every minute on the minute. So in, in the program specifically that I put, it's one minute spent on each thing or a completed dose reps and rest remainder of the minute with a goal of four rounds or 16 minutes for this individual. The beauty of being a skilled clinician, though, is that even though I had 16 minutes planned for this individual, if after he completes the third round, I'm asking him about effort and he's saying eight or nine out of 10, I can say, OK, we're going to just stop at three rounds today because I want to leave some gas in the tank for you to complete yeah, get back in your home, complete tasks around the house. And then maybe, so we're talking about 12 to 16 minutes of his day. So maybe I'm going to work on floor transfers after the fact, or maybe I worked on them beforehand. And so that's why he's a little bit more worn out, just depending on what those goals are, where we need to see his capability after fatigue. And, and you know, you can kind of dose that as appropriate. One visit, you might try the harder stuff of floor transfers first to make sure that he has the capability to do it. And then you might add layer in that endurance aspect of doing it at the end at another visit to see what he's capable of after completing some work. So multiple ways to dose this. The patient is doing very well at this point. He's approaching a level that's better than before he landed in the hospital, which is absolutely the goal. We don't want him to be in the hospital again. So we have got him to but beyond that PLOF, right? We're beyond that at this point. Gradually getting there, of course. So we've had the same approach throughout his care. So acute care, home health, outpatient. And we've utilized similar language as we planted these seeds of healthy lifestyles and behaviors with this patient. Now we're starting to ask, now he's starting to ask questions. How can he continue regular visits? You know, it's not feasible for you or your clinic to continue him on your caseload long term, you know, insurance dictates some of that, but also we also, we, there's other people that need our care as well, but we don't want to just kick him to the curb and let him be because we don't want him to regress from all that progress that we just made. So this is when having the resources and networking within the community is vital to the patient's continued trajectory to fitness and away from frailty. We want to get him as far away from frailty as we possibly can while we have that contact with him. So it's even better when you know healthcare providers providing fitness. So Jeff is that guy for us in this case. The patient is introduced to Jeff and the fitness facility. Then after a few visits filled with hesitation, the patient starts to thrive and performs the following. He does five to 15 bouts of effort with breaks and a dynamic warm up. He's gonna practice all the movements that are in the planned programming. Sounds like familiar kind of programming for a fitness facility, right? So he has 90 second intervals and repeats five rounds of step ups, push ups from a box. Okay, starting to get more of that upper extremity assist as well. And then he has a 12 minute continuous effort workout, six air squats, 12 jumping jacks, 24 marches with eyes closed. So that marches with eyes closed is less, you know, impacting or less, you know, strain on this individual, but it's also very taxing cognitively because he's having to focus on balance with his eyes closed. So that 12 minutes of continuous effort that marching with eyes closed kind of becomes his rest break, but it's cognitively demanding. So a very nice give and take throughout the entire program. And these are things that he's gonna be familiar with from his care with you. At this point, the patient is working towards reserve and resiliency. Making trips to the hospital much less likely and much less abundant is the goal, of course, and keeping him from becoming homebound or 
institutionalized, which is what we all want to avoid doing. So any touch point that you have with an individual is a great opportunity. Now, you can't just preach all this to them at once, of course, there'd be too much overload and they may never see them again. But just planting those little seeds, putting a little drop in their bucket, putting those thought worms in of why fitness and why lifestyle behaviors matter so much, getting good sleep, getting good nutrition, meditating, being mindful, and, and getting the correct doses of resilient or of um, resistance training as well as aerobic training is going to be so impactful for them and help them really enjoy the duration of their life as opposed to being in and out of hospitals. So really pushing that reserve and resiliency with your older adults is what we want to be focused on. Not so focused that that's all we're talking about, but focused enough that that is, you know, that message is getting across and they're starting to see why we're preaching this so much. So then the second point that I told you I wanted to make is about the handoff sheet. This does not have to be complicated at all. This does not have to take a ton of your time. I'm not trying to give you more work to do, but this can be five straightforward, quick bullets. One, your information. What is your name? How can I contact you? Important patient goals. What have you discovered? What have you dug in and found out is important to the patient sitting in front of you? Outcome measures and score at discharge. So what outcome measures did you do most recently? And what was that score? So you're saving me some work and you're helping that patient skip a step if they need to move on to the next outcome measure if they're sealing out the last one that you did. Important considerations. So these may be medical, psychosocial, environmental. So lots of considerations that can go on to a go in through a patient's care, especially if you're in home health, you get to see a look into their lives that out, outpatient or acute care providers may not get to see. So if it's someone you've been working with and you can recognize some considerations that might be important for them to have compliance or to be able to, to perform the things that they need to do in and around the house, great, great spot to note that for those people. And then a quick example of a recent session. So just like I went through from what the previous providers did um, in this you know, person's series of care, then just a quick example of some exercises and interventions that you've been doing. Are you using RPE? Like, how are you discussing this with the patient? So having a common language is going to be so helpful. And if we can get an insight into what they were doing at the previous session with the previous provider, just like you would if you were in the same clinic, then that's going to be super helpful. It doesn't have to be a full note, just a quick like sit to stands, RPE 7 out of 10, and like how long they were doing work for it and how they tolerated it would be great. Super quick sheet, one page, knock out those bullet points, hand it off to your patient and say, hey, give this to your next provider. This will help you be able to continue the progress that you've made with us. And then you'll be able to continue thriving with what you're wanting to do and reach those goals that are so meaningful to you. So communication, building a network and resources, sticking with the plan of progressing this patient in the same manner as they were already starting with, same trajectory, and getting them into the fitness community is, is so important. And then using that handoff sheet to make all that come together and be cohesive and have that wonderful continuity of care that we so desperately want for everybody. Thank you everyone and happy aging.